This is Rattling the Cage with Tony Reed. It's time. Hey, what's up? Rattling the Cage with Tony Reed is back. We are in the Stone State studio uh, alongside eight days a week. Uh, joined in studio, as always, Johnny V in the place to be. What's going on, man? Hello, Tony Reed. Hello, John. How's it going today, sir? Um, I got nothing. Okay, great. Well, then I'll keep talking. <laughs> now we got a great, uh, great show lined up as always. Uh, recently retired former UFC title contender and local guy to a degree, Mr. Dennis Bermudez is going to be on the show. We're going to talk about his his reasoning for retirement, what his future holds, and details of his innermost thoughts during a fight. Dun dun dun. Oh. We got that. We got UFC welterweight great Tiago Alves. Fresh off his somewhat controversial win over Max Griffin at UFC Fortaleza a few short weeks ago. Uh, we'll talk about his throwback style, his mindset. Now that he's kind of in the second half of his career and how this is not a young man's sport, John. Tiago said this is not a young man's sport. MMA, that is. What? So I'll just throw that right off the top. Is MMA a young man's sport? Um, well... If this weekend proved anything, <laughs> the answer is yes, it is a young man sport. Um, as someone who started doing, you know, uh, training in, in, the, in the MMA, you know, in, in your late 20s, early 30s, and now attempts to do it at 40, yeah, yeah, you want to be young. He said, Tiago, he makes a, a valid argument. You'll you have to hear it in the interview. He makes a valid argument. He said he feels as good now as he ever has. He's a guy who's had 10-plus surgeries over the course of his career, kept him out you know, years on end. He said in his mid to late 30s, he feels as good as ever. And he started pointing to guys like Cormier, who's the champ champ now. And I, I see you rolling your eyes, but I'm just saying, listen to his argument. I think he makes a valid point. <laughs> Okay. I'm guilty of saying, I, I probably say that all the time, that's a young man's sport, but he just gives, sheds some light, gives a different perspective. I think it's, it's interesting, at, now, at the very I, least. Now, let's, let's be, be clear on this. The older fighters can get it done. You can get it done. Yeah. But again, father time is undefeated. So yeah. is He's a, like two draws, though, right. doesn't he? So, right. He Couture may. and Henderson. Couture and Henderson. He's, yeah. <laughs> Satchel Paige, I mean, he ma just, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Father Time just beat the shit out of Chuck Liddell he did. and Tito Ortiz. Now, Tito, I don't know, Tito's... Well, in, in, Tito's, I, I, think, in I think it's a draw. I think it was a draw with Daryl Green as well. Yes. Can, when you can side, run like a 4-4 four, four at note, 45 years old. No, 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 no. I'm going to tell the story. Side note, as a Redskins fan, I, I, I saw this. Daryl Green, on his 50th birthday, ran a 4-4-40. That's insanity. Just for just for fun, it's probably probably in dress shoes yeah, and, like and, a, a and a tuxedo. Yeah, just decided to go out and and ran a four four forty at fifty years. You old. know what? Nolan Ryan. Nolan, Nolan Ryan, Ryan might have a win over Father Time. I, I believe, or at least he struck him out once. <laughs> looking, <laughs> caught caught him in the rest of time with no hitters. But back, on. okay. So, but but all is we are correct. Yes, they can get it done. But but that sustaining, you know, we're we're seeing it more and more. Whether it be Fedor, whether it be some of these guys that that can get it done, but you, I don't, I think the consistency, you know, kind of wanes as you get older. Yeah, you know, you you see, you, you're not going to be as consistent. Fedor can get through a couple guys, but you know, he he he's going to catch up with somebody younger, stronger, and and in better uh, better uh, frame of fighting mind, I guess you could say, and 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 it's not going to work. So I think. Yes, the answer is yes. The old guys can get it done, but I think that consistency—it's kind of a crapshoot thing. It's—it's like—it's like Jordan playing for the Wizards. Yeah. He's going to score forty one night, and he's going to score eight the next night. Yeah. So it's you're you're not really sure what you're getting. But I think just not micro, but macro, just with technology, with all the advancements, you know, and things we can do with the human body now. I think we are extending careers a lot longer than. Pretty much in any sport, that's that's pretty much common knowledge. But I don't know. You listen to what Tiago says. You tell me what you think after the fact. But I guess on that note, we just talked about the Tiago Alves interview. But we're going to jump into Dennis Bermudez first here on a riding the cage with Tony Reed. This is Tony Reed, Fighters Only Magazine, joined by the recently retired former UFC contender, one of the most interesting guys to talk to in the entire sport, Mr. Dennis Bermudez. How's it going, man? 
Going well, man. How you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. So the, the obvious place to start, you you left your gloves in the octagon after your win over Tay Edwards at UFC Brooklyn. Um, now that you've had at least, not a lot of time, but a little time to kind of step back and reflect on on, on that night, on the announcement, what are your thoughts on, on the fight itself and then the announcement afterwards? Was the, the in-cage announcement, was that, was that planned or was that spur of the moment? I guess we can start with the fight itself. I mean, going out on top, going out with a win, I mean, that's that's kind of storybook ending, I guess, right? Yeah, going out on top was the, was the you know, what we were going for. Um, but in terms of retiring, if I, like, knocked him out in the first round or submitted him in the first round and didn't take any damage, I don't think I would be retired. Wow. Yeah. No, he, he fucking he uppercutted me and dropped me. <laughs> and, I, and I got up. And he was looking at me like, looking at like, he had this look in his face like he wanted to kill me. I'm like, oh, <laughs> you really want to do this right now? I really don't feel like doing this. <laughs> and then I grabbed his leg and took him down and, uh, you know, finished the fight. But, like, the fact that I was like, man, I don't want to do this right now. Wow. Yeah, that kind of moment, like a re- weird moment of, of clarity or something like that? Well, I mean, it's happened in multiple fights where I'm like, oh, what's going on here? Oh, you're, I'm fighting you and you just knocked me down. Um, and you look like you want to kill me. And it's, 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 a, it's not a great feeling, you know? So, <laughs> no, I, I don't want to do that imagine. to myself anymore. <laughs> So, like you said, that you know, that you, you had that 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 feeling, that moment. Uh, but you said you, you've you've had it before. So, how? I guess the, the the question was how how do you know this was the one that I guess really felt <laughs> felt like a, the finality or the final of, of it all. I had to go out with a whim, dude. I'm a <clears throat> yeah. loser. <laughs> I never claimed that you are. I never no, would. No, no. Uh, well, in, in all reality, the. Um, the, the 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 streak of losses on split decisions where I was like, really, dude? And I would, I would go back and watch those fights, and I would look at those fights looking at it at that, how that guy won. I couldn't see it. Mm-hmm. I would do it, you know, drinking some beers. I would do it sober. I would do it while I was tired. I would do it after a workout. I would do it before a workout. And I couldn't find out how that guy claimed he, he won, you know? Yeah. That was like... And, and, and I, you know, I remember one night I had a couple of beers and I, I said something to Feely and I was like, yo, let's, let's run it back because you know you didn't win. He was like, no, I only fight relevant fighters and he knows he oh. lost. He doesn't want to work again. Yeah. Yeah, and you mentioned you, you, you talked about almost re, you know you consider retirement and kind of in the midst of that of that tough four fight losing streak, like you said, crazy split decisions. How close did you did you come to hanging it up during during that streak? Was the level of frustration that high where you really were like, screw this, I, I might be done? <laughs> well, I told myself before the Glenn fight that if I lost to this bum, I was going to retire. <laughs> and then I, after the third round, I thought I won. And Ryan Flair came into the octagon. He's like, nice job, dude. You. You put it all out there, you, you empty the tank, you you put in the effort, you got it done, you definitely won. And then when the decision came and I they said I lost, I, I looked at them, I was like, that's it, man, I'm hanging them up. Mm. I'm done with it. This is bullshit, man. I'm not having some, I'm not having one guy on a particular night take 50 grand out of my pocket. Yeah, yeah. You know? And that was... I worked too hard for that. Absolutely. I sacrificed too much for that. Absolutely. Uh, it w- was that the, 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 the like meat and potatoes of what you were going through? I know you kind of said, I think you mentioned something to Anik in, in Cage that you, you, you're going through some stuff. Was that, w- is that what you're talking about? Or was there, was there more to it than that? Or w- was that pretty much? Nah, I've gone through women, pr- women tr- troubles. Ah, ah. <laughs> you know, they're all, they're all crazy, but you got to figure it out. Yeah. yeah, yes, yeah. Every girl's at least a four crazy. What's that? Every girl's at least a four crazy. <laughs> yeah. You know the hot matrix, the hot crazy matrix? No, I don't, I'm not familiar with that, no. What? you never seen that on YouTube? No. It starts at a four, though, for girls in terms of crazy, because <laughs> no girl is below a four. <laughs> 
Yeah. After 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 be uh, get, get get familiar with the uh, <laughs> with the, Hang on, the look matrix. Up the crazy hot matrix for women <laughs> on YouTube. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah, but in all seriousness, uh, that outside the the outside forces. I mean, that that really can can throw a, you know a wrench into into stuff, especially when you have to be as laser focused as as a professional athlete, and especially in MMA. To you know, there's a lot of stuff, and you know, people get caught up in the outside stuff, and you can't you can't avoid it. You can't you know compartmentalize yeah, well, or whatever. It's it's just it's yeah. incredibly tough. Yeah, no, in, in all honesty, you know, I was, in a, I was in a serious relationship for a while, and, and you know, we still talk now-ish, but, it, you know, we're, like, broken up, whatever. Anyways, long story short, I was going kind of crazy, and I was like, man, I need to fight again, because that's the only thing that will help me mm. focus on something other than what's going on in my life, you know? Yeah. Because I'm getting ready to fight, everything else stops. Hmm. My house gets dirty because I don't, you know, more focused on training, getting stronger, my nutrition, everything towards the fight. So yeah. if my house being dirty is going to help me win the fight because I have to do less and use less energy, then it's going to be dirty. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I mean, I don't want people to get the wrong idea. I'm not a dirty person. <laughs> Oh, so I, yeah. think, I think we know what you're getting at. It That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, so like once once the news came out, I mean, I remember watching. You know, I think I even sent you a quick text. I don't mean to bother you, but you know, when we're sitting here watching stuff, it's like, man, that's that's a, that's a big deal. You know, the the, the R word, the retirement. That's, that's a big deal. What what's been the response from everyone else in the community since you made the announcement? Have you been getting like well wishes and texts and calls and yeah, all that kind man. of stuff? Yeah, man. Not nothing but love. Yeah, nothing but love. It's, it's been uh, been pretty awesome. You know, I I haven't been able to go through all, all my instant messages and some of that and read everything. I read a lot of it. Um, I, I, the first two days, I put in like eight hour work days, like reading messages from people, you know? That's got to make you know, feel good, though, to have that response. That means that, you know, you struck yeah, a chord sure. with many people and, you you know, you made an impact and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. I, no, I agree. Yeah. So, uh, it, I know something else you mentioned. I don't mean to keep going back to the the in cage, you know, Anik interview, but you said you, you said you know you, you, your uncle's battling cancer, and you know you said that when the Bermuda's yeah. boys are down and out, they come back and get it done. I mean, is there anything you could elaborate on there, or choose to elaborate on on your uncle's condition? Is it is it any better? Is it something that's not not going to get better? Do you, you know, I mean, I don't know what you want to elaborate on that. With. Yeah, yeah. I, I, think, I think he's in the same ballpark as, as from the fight. You know, I think, um, you know, diet, nutrition, and just doing the right things, he can he can fight and come out of it uh, on top, you know. Um, but in terms of, like, Bermuda's boys don't give up, it's, you know, I was down four losses, and I could have hung it up and ended on that. But instead of, like, you know, told myself that I can win, and I'm not – a loser, and I, I am one of the best guys in the UFC, and that, you know, on top of it, hey, let's go to a different weight class and prove that I can win mm. there, you know, yeah. so, um, and I didn't want to cut 10 extra pounds, so, <laughs> there's that, uh, too, right? <laughs> yeah, so, uh, no, man, just, just to, to, to end on top, you know? Yeah, and he also said that was important important for the kiddos too to to, to see and kind of witness and and that. So that's obviously a big uh, motivating factor too, I'd imagine. Yeah, my my little guys are still pretty young and stuff like that, but I feel like YouTube's gonna be around for a long time. And they're like, yeah, my dad's sport. Like, let me look him up. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, yeah, son. So I tell you, to clean your damn room. <laughs> you better get in there ASAP. <laughs> Don't make me pull up the old fight videos. Show you what Dad yeah, was all okay, about. Okay. Right? Yeah, you want to love now? <laughs> <laughs> so now that you've you've called it a career, looking back, what's what was the fight of your life? What was the fight of your career? What one are you most uh, happy with or proud of or all that good stuff? The, the Matt Rice fuck. Yeah. Yeah, because he fucked, he mollywhopped me really bad. I should have been dead. <laughs> and then I I came from from the graves and I. I, I crushed him um, in the third round, but like I don't know. Just after the fight, I don't know. We, me and him had this bond after that too, like a, a war. Yeah. You know, and I remember throwing the very last punch.
punch and then the buzzer going off, just be like, <clears throat> and just trying to catch my breath. And I had, I knew that I emptied everything I had in my body in that fight, you know? Mm. That's got to be an amazing thing to, to be able to do that, to be successful doing that. I mean, you know, you hear guys talk about that a lot, you know, fighting through that adversity and truly leaving it all out there. I know it's a, a corny, overused phrase, but when it really happens, I mean, that's, that's yeah. an impressive thing. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, now that it's over, looking back, if... Well, I guess what's the what's the fight you didn't get? Was there a guy out there for whatever reason? You know, whether it was to test yourself to to whatever the case may be. Who, who was the one fight that kind of got away for whatever reason? I wanted Mac, I wanted uh, Mac Holloway to, to chase his L against mm. me for a title. Yeah, I, wanted, I want him to put his title on the line to chase the L against me. Oh, that that's an interesting one. That's a good storyline too, huh? Yeah. <laughs> That's a good one. So uh, looking back at all the, the gym stories, the training sessions, like, you know, we've talked about, you know, talk about LaFlair and the great team you have up there in New York. What, what's yeah. the most memorable gym moment, whether it be just a, a sparring session, a, you know, a role, whatever it was? What, what was the most memorable gym moment for you? I remember uh, sparring with Ryan LaFlair and uh, we were just going – air quotes, light, and he, like, I, you know, I have to cover a lot of range to get to Ryan, yeah. and he threw a left, a left hook, like, on my nose and dropped me, and, like, as I was falling down, I was like, fuck, and I, like, as soon as I hit the ground, he's laughing at me, <laughs> and I got up, and, uh, it was a good time. And you're like, did we just become best friends? I'm like, I'm like, bro, I thought we were going light. <laughs> I thought we're going. I was like, "Bro, you rushed me." I'm like, "Sorry." <laughs> so, uh, as, as a fan of the sport, as you were coming up throughout your career, maybe now you know post-fight career, who are some of your favorite fighters? Who are the guys that that kind of get the juices flowing? Who are the guys or girls you want to see on pay-per-view? I mean, who are some of your favorites right now? Um, I always liked watching uh, Chad Mendez fight and Jose Aldo, even though they're in my weight class. But I always thought those guys got after it pretty hard. Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, trying to think of Anderson Silva was, was always pretty cool, uh, especially in like his prime. Um, but he was almost like too good. I was like, ah, he can't be my favorite. <laughs> like no one could touch him. <laughs> yeah. And I like how Charles Summons like trash talk. You know? Yeah, he definitely took that to a whole different level. I mean, that Ooh. was. Well, he, he did, wrote the book. Well, he did outside the cage was as impressive as what a lot of guys do inside the oh, cage. Amazing. <laughs> and you have to, you know, you know what it is. You have to take it for what it is, and you know, yeah, you can't help but yeah, it's undeniable how successful he was with it for sure. Yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, well, he got all those title fights. I, I, a lot of people say that. Yes, he's a really good fighter, but like, I think his talk got him in position for a lot of. Uh, fights that people felt he shouldn't have gotten. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, he talked his way into a few big ones for, for sure. <laughs> Lucky. <Yeah. laughs> so over the course of your career, it, it was a long one, storied one, you know, it just uh, you had a heck of a run. What was the most amazing thing you saw as far as the the growth of, of the UFC or the growth, growth of MMA in general? What was the, the pinch me moment or the oh shit moment? Was there a moment where you're like, man, this is this is getting pretty big. Um, well, I mean, in, in my head when I got to the UFC, it was already really big. Yeah. Uh, um, I guess fighting on the uh, McGregor, Chad Mendes card was like pretty, pretty big. You know, people were like, I remember trying to get back to my hotel room and I, I like kind of couldn't because there's people there were so many people in the way. <laughs> it was just annoying there's like chanting Irish chant. They're drunk. <laughs> we were up in uh, New York at MSG when, when Connor fought Eddie and it's just a whole different whole different vibe, whole different environment, whole different like level of craziness i guess to to be in a, in that environment when connor's on the card it really is something special it really is yeah, something ireland, different. ireland rolls in you're like jesus all these drunk fucking leprechauns everywhere <laughs> i can't i fly i can't get some drunk Puerto Ricans where i go what the fuck's going on here 
You're like, he gets an entire country. We can't even get you know, 30 I'd people. Like, <laughs> I, I, 30. 30 people would be nice. <laughs> That's great stuff. So. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, you, you, even especially with the, the, the announcement here, you know, kind of looking back, you, you inspired so many, you know, people, even here locally, you know, we're in, we're near Bloomsburg, I, I, you know, fell out of Bloom after a semester, we're familiar with the area that we work with, <laughs> we're, uh, you know, t- Tim's around here, we know you bounce in and out of Tim's gym, you know, we talk about you yeah. very fondly around here, so uh, for you, who, who inspired you, you know, you inspire so many, and, you know, people see you in, in the public spotlight, in the public guy, who who inspired you coming up, or maybe even today, to this day? Um, all the haters. Yeah. No, I'm kidding. I, no, there, were, there were some people when I first started fighting. Actually, my dad. <laughs> yeah. When I first started fighting, my dad came to like my first pro fight, and um, he came, he had to get to a couple pro fights, and then. I'm just hanging out after like a day of training. He calls me, I'm like, son, what's up, dad? He's like, just got done watching the UFC. I'm like, oh, sick. He's like, like, listen, like, you're good and all, but these guys, <laughs> these guys are killers. <laughs> hey, wait, wait, wait. You called me to tell me, like, fuck you, dude. I didn't say that to him because I'm afraid of him still, but I thought it. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it. <laughs> You gotta love dads, right? <laughs> uh, and, hang on, and then I get the UFC and I start fucking getting a win streak going, hey, guess who's like, whoa, yeah, Team Dennis, like, fuck you, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Too late, no room on the fucking, bandwagon, you're right? You're goddamn, what's that, what's that, uh, yeah, but you're on the bandwagon now. No, yeah, no, no more room on the bandwagon, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy because they always said that about Barry Sanders. They said Barry Sanders' dad was a huge Walter Payton fan, and no matter what Barry did, he was never going to be Walter Payton. It's just crazy. Is this real life? Yeah. I knew me and Barry were the same person. <laughs> they said in the- the theory was that's why he retired before he broke Payton's record because his dad loved Payton so much. Isn't that crazy? That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my! Hey, I don't want to hold you up. I know it's fight night. You know, you're you're working and all. But uh, before we let you go, is there anything anything you want to say? Like any any thoughts on you know things? The current state of of Dennis Bermudez now as the retired you know fighter. I mean, what what what, what uh, I guess parting shots do you do you have? Um, it's crazy. Is it, uh. Now that I'm retired, I like work out more than I did when I was actually fighting <laughs> because I don't have to. It's yeah, like I want yeah, to. that makes uh, sense. Actually, yeah. And I've been eating cleaner, way sooner after a fight than I because in my head, like I better eat all this junk food now because in a few months I'm not gonna be able to eat it, you know. But I know I can eat whatever I want, whenever I want. So I just eat healthier. Hmm. Um, so it's kind of backwards. <laughs> My life, I guess. Um, yeah, I got my own podcast called Menace the Man. Fucking badass. I'll have to check it out for sure. We'll get you. We'll get you live on ours here soon too. But uh, hey, man, congratulations on a hell of a career, hell of a run. Thank you. Always appreciate the time, and uh, I'll let you know. We'll get this in print in the next issue of the magazine. I'll let you know when that goes to print. We'll get some yeah, copies send me the out. Magazine, dude. Absolutely, I'll send you five. Give one to your dad, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, man. Hey, enjoy the night. Thanks for the time, and uh, we'll talk soon, man. So that was uh, the chat with Dennis Bermudez. Uh, he just seemed in conversation. He's always in a good mood, always in good spirits, but he seemed almost like there was a weight lifted off the shoulders. He seemed really laid back. When, when I first picked up the phone with him, he was like, Clearly, we had texted back and forth. We had talked before. I I call him and he answers and he's you know, saying he's you know it's a bar that I call and he's calling from you know just kind of just goofing. So it was cool, but he was like seemed even more more open, more laid back, more at ease than even he usually does. So you could almost feel the sense of like I said that kind of weight being lifted off his shoulders. Now the decision's made. It's done. Again, going out with a W was of utmost importance to him, like he said, uh, just to kind of show his, show everyone, but especially show his kids. Like he said, you know, 
us Bermudas guys, you know, when it going gets tough, the tough get going kind of thing. So it was cool to, to hear that from him, cool to hear him in such good spirits, cool to, he gave a little insight there. Like we talked about, you know, when did he know? And he kind of jokingly, but kind of seriously said, you know, in mid fight, you know, if you're getting it put on you, you're like, I don't want to do this. <laughs> like literally what are you thinking in his head in this last fight? He really was like, yeah, I don't want to do this. <laughs> so it was kind of cool insight from, from Dennis, but you know. Yeah. And, and again, that doesn't happen very often. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, maybe in the middle of a fight, guys have gone, I don't want to be in this, this particular fight yeah. anymore. I don't want this guy punching me in the face yeah, anymore. Repeatedly. <laughs> but to say, I don't want to do the sport anymore. You know what? Good for him. Yeah. I mean, who was uh, the the NFL guy recently just c- retired at halftime? Yeah. Who was uh, that? Uh, what was that guy? earlier this Come season. on, Nick. I can't All right. Think. Nick. Well, Nick looks this up because, yeah. you know. We, as, soon as, he, as soon as he says it, I'm going to. I know. It's going to make us mad. But anyway. anyway yeah. Anyways. But again, I, if you know, you know. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Good for you. We were just talking about the old guys hanging on too long. Yeah. Right? Who was it, Nick? Vontae Davis. Yes. There we go. Was it, it was a half even. Half time, wasn't it? right. It was like, there you yeah. go. So Vontae Davis. So this is there a, you go. This, he is the <laughs> MMA equivalent of Vontae Davis, except unfortunately, he didn't have a half time yeah. to leave. He yeah. just he just had to take a couple more punches to the grill and then then retire. Well, but, in fairness, you could you could call it after a round, be like, hey, right. peace out. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> Right, but three again, rounds but, two and three. Yeah, I'm out. Good for him. You yeah. know what? And and again, we've we have a personal relationship with yeah. him. You know, he's has ties to to the area, ties to to you know Bloomsburg Wrestling, and yeah. and so good for him. And, and you, you never know; he's young enough. Yeah, he's like thirty two. Yeah, the itch so. the itch comes back. Yeah, he's he. Go ahead. Yeah, but. I like to hear somebody say that. I like yeah. to hear somebody to say, you know what? Don't want to do it anymore. I'm not going to do it. Yeah. So don't hang on too long. You know, don't don't uh, don't do it if the passion's in it. Because MMA is a sport and an endeavor that if you're not heart's not in it, you know, it's not like playing golf. Yeah. Where you can just kind of half heartedly go out and play eighteen. Yeah. You can't just half heartedly wander into the cage and and throw down. It, it, no. It's not going to go well. Yeah, again, just a, just a cool interview. Dennis always gives great insight. And no, another thing he mentioned in, in the piece was the fact that he opened up. He, he had some personal problems. His, his significant other, you know, things weren't working out. So there was a lot weighing on him in the last few months and maybe even years that he was working through. So, I, like I said, I just I sensed a lot, of, a lot of weight lifted off the shoulder. So it was great to talk to him as always, but even cool to hear, cooler to hear that in his voice. So... Second interview, John, we already talked about it, at least about part of Tiago's comments. Again, Tiago Alves, I hate to throw the round, around the word legend because he hasn't been a champ, but just a great. I think he's one of the, the greats of the welterweight division over the past 10 years. Run in the UFC, like I said, he fought, fought for the title, came up short. We talked about that as well, but it just seemed like... The, we, I think we talked about this on the show before, too. Like, guys that necessarily aren't necessarily champions and icons, and you won't consider them legends, but, like, that next step down, where they're still greats. They're, they're not all-timers, but they're guys that we'll remember forever. You know, he's, he's definitely one of those A-list names in the sport. So, uh, pretty interesting interview with Tiago Alves coming up. Next here on Rattling the Cage with Tony Reed. This is Tony Reed, Fighters Only Magazine, and Rattling the Cage, joined by UFC welterweight contender, one of the greats in the sport, Tiago Alves. How's it going, man? I'm doing good, man. You cannot complain. How about you? I'm doing well. I'm doing well so far. So far, so good today. Right? <laughs> so the the obvious place to start, UFC Fight Night 144. You scored a split decision over Max Griffin. Um, Controversial to some, maybe. Um, now that you've had a, at least a few days, you know, a week or so away from the fight, what are your takeaways now looking back at that night? I did. It was a, a, a great weekend for me and my family, you know, uh, just be able to, you know, stay in this division for such a long time and be able to come back to my hometown mm. where my career started, where everything started, you know, after. I mean, it's so big right now in Brazil, and when yeah. I left, it was it was nothing like that. Now, it's as big as soccer, you know, mm. and, and it's pretty crazy because I used to get stopped in the streets here in America, you know, a lot, and uh, in Brazil never really happened. So now, like, 
I'm as powerful in Brazil as you know I, I, I am in here. So and that's crazy because that's awesome. that really, you know, never never really happened uh, before. You know, but it's good to see the, the evolution of the sport. You know, uh, it's good to see like my family and friends and be able to get a victory over there. That's for sure. Absolutely. Like you mentioned, fight, fighting in your hometown, it's always special. Um, but it seems like it might have been a little more special this time. What, what, how great was that? Was the fight and just, like you said, just the experience of being back with, with the sport kind of growing leaps and bounds, you being recognized? I mean, it just it sounds like a really special weekend or week for you. Yeah, I know, especially overcoming, you know, what I, what I had to overcome. Yeah. You know, uh, I've, been, I've been in the sport for so long and it's been a lot of ups and downs, you know. I, a lot of, I had a lot of surgeries, you know, since I started my career in UFC. I had literally 10 surgeries since I uh, joined the UFC, you know, uh, and those 10 surgeries, and I've been out for about, you know, four to five years without competition, without being able to compete, without being able to be consistent, you know, and now, finally, I'm able to put a few fights back to back, mm. you know, I'm healthy, I'm, I'm feeling great, you know, this is the best, at 35, this is the best I ever felt, you know, uh, uh, body-wise and, and, and mentally as well. You know, I understand this game, the in and out of this game. I've been through so much, I've seen it all. You know, there's literally nothing. It's it's interesting. You know, that can happen to be that haven't happened before. You know, yeah. so it, it was just super special to to be able to do war. You know, in front of my hometown. It's interesting you mentioned that because I went back to look at our last piece that, that printed in the magazine. I just kind of reread it real quick, and that was the first question I asked. That was that was the fight back after the the extremely long layoff. So it's interesting now that, like you said, even at, at, at a not an advanced age, but you know what I mean. A, a few years have passed. You know, you're you're healthy now. You know, you, like you said, you kind of have a couple of fights back to back. You're rolling. It must feel great right now. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, and it's crazy that. You know, uh, at this stage, you know, I'm still learning, I'm still getting better. You know, I'm still learning about uh, the way I should be fighting, you know, fighting style, knowing, just getting to know myself more and, and developing as a fighter, you know, uh, now that I have time, you know, to be in the gym, you know, pretty much every day, either coaching or training. So uh, that definitely uh, made a huge difference, you know, and I have no distraction. All I do, you know, is breed, eat, sleep, fighting, you know, 24 <laughs> seven. Uh, and. Uh, and I think that's just the, the combination, you know, of years, years of hard work. You know, I had some setbacks, and I had to kind of made up for the lost time that I wasn't able to train. I was just recovering, you know, and now it's finally come together. So I'm super excited, man. You know, uh, I know at 35, you know, I don't, I'm not, I don't want to be fighting for too long as well. So this last few years, dude, it's going to be my last year. I'm going to finish on top, and I'm going to come back stronger than, than ever, you know, finish this career the way I started. Yeah, I know you mentioned that too. Two, two fights left on the deal. Um, you, you're not one to call out or handpick opponents, but you did say you want to be out by 37. So what? I mean, as as you plan, as you you know visualize things moving forward over this next you know maybe two years. What, you said big things. What what are you looking for? What what are you looking to do? Obviously, you're already a legend in the sport. You've accomplished so much. What are you looking to do? You know, wrapping up maybe these next two years or so. I'm looking to win. You yeah, know, I'll finish uh, uh, my career in you know, a winning streak. You know, uh, uh, that's that's the goal. You know, I don't wanna. I made a lot of plans throughout my career. You know, and I fulfilled pretty much 99 percent of them. The only plan I didn't fulfill was becoming a champion, but mm. I came pretty damn close. Yeah. You know, and uh, uh, fighting. You know, the one of the best fighters to ever live. You know, GSP was so ahead of our time. Mm. You know, and to be able to come back after two years and, and become a champion and a weight class above, you know, it's just it just show how ahead of our time he was, you know. But uh, uh, again, dude, I, 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 if I die today, I die ha happily because I've been living my dreams for as long as I can remember. Yeah. You know, and, and it's a very hard sport. You know, this is <laughs> this is not for everybody, and I, and I know that. I know the the gift and the blessings I've been given my whole life, and. Uh, I'm just smelling the flowers now because I'm really enjoying the process. I'm enjoying learning, I'm enjoying getting better. But I'm still motherfucking there, dude. You know, you literally have to kill me to get me out of there. And I know that, you know, having that confidence in your back pocket, it is, it's very special. You know, because I have no fear. You know, now I'm going to start fighting in the first round instead of the second. <laughs> That's funny. You you mentioned too recently that you kind of see yourself as a throwback. You know, you're you're in there, balls to the wall, all action, ready to to kill or be killed. Do you see the game changing a little bit with guys being a little overly cautious, a little overly 
game plan heavy. You know, we kind of all want to see a little bit of a throwback to an earlier time when, now clearly you go out with a, a, an immense skill set, but just to go out there and bang a little bit. I mean, I think, I think it's missing a little, little bit in the sport. Do you, do you agree with that? A hundred percent, man. You know, I, I think the fun of it. You know, it kind of got taken out. A little Absolutely. Bit of all these outside pressures. You know, like before when we started, when I started, you know, there's no way you could make a living. You know, out of MMA. You know, unless you were an elite, an elite. So you really fight because you love the three. You love the the. You have passion for. You know that that samurai lifestyle. Of, mm. You know, I'm gonna get out there and fucking. I'm gonna test my skills against this dude. And I see who's the best, you know, there's no holding back, there's nothing, no, uh, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not worried if I'm going to lose my job, if I'm going to get caught, you know, from one organization to another, you know, so there's a lot of uh, outside forces that are making, you know, the fighting inside of Dr. Gunn, not as fear as it used to be, you know, uh, people are really worried about winning, and I agree, you know, uh, we're, we're in a professional sport, you know, victory, you know, positive results is everything, you know, but I think that is a fine line between going out there and fighting to finish a fight. You know, you, that's that's what you fight for. You mm-hmm. know, to finish the fight. And you got 50 minutes to or 25 minutes to get that done. And uh, But I think you really got to be in a, in a good place to be able to find that harmony of just fighting because I want to fight, because I want to win, you know, and I'm going to try to finish. I'm going to try to win the fight every second of the fight. Absolutely. You know, but that's just the game right now. You know, there's a lot of, it's a different game than what it used to be. So you got to be able to adjust. Yeah. The new game, yeah. Today. Absolutely, and I know I know you were asked after the after the fight and the post fight. Uh, the, the the you you spoke about the the emotions of fight week. How it's kind of hard to to put into words. Can you try? I mean, what what are the highs and lows? We know the weight cut. We know the prep. We know all all that goes into that. But you know, I've never been in there clearly, and you have you know more than we can even count. What what do the what do the days leading up to the fight? What does that week? feel like what kind of roller coaster is that like for you so it, it's like you you fight in an uphill battle you know uh, on a daily basis that you know it hasn't started yet you know? so you pretty much win and lose your fight in your head you know so many times mm. before the actual fight happens you know because you have those you know uh positive uh images in your head that you keep you know playing over and over mm. and over and then at the end it's always your hand raised you know and then you have those other, you know, uh, on one uh, uh, negative deals, you know, that yeah, for for no reason just jump in your head, you know, and then block to the, um, you know, if I lose this fight or where you're in a bad situation. But every time I put myself in a bad situation, even my visualizations, I always try to overcome and you know, I'm getting out of the bad situation and and winning the fight, you know. But it's always that, you know, literally you play the fight, you know, back and forth, you fight the fight so many times in your head, you know, and most of the time. If you know how to use it, you're always winning, you know, but there's always that, you know, situation that you could lose and you get a little bit desperate and then you got to reframe your thoughts. So it's that roller coaster of, of emotion before the fight, you know, that man, the mental uh, drainage that you go through before the fight. You actually fight the fight many, many times in your head before it actually happens. You know, if you don't know, if you haven't been there, you know, if you haven't done it for a very long time, it, it's kind of draining, you know, mm. and, and if you don't catch your thoughts, you know, it might, it might be know a bad thing for you so you really got to be aware of your hand as you fight week yeah yeah absolutely something else you talked about and i'm guilty of it too you know you talk about it not being a young man's sport but you know we always hear the phrase you know it is a young man's sport but there's so many guys that are proving otherwise including yourself i mean it's got to feel cool to be a part of that i know you mentioned dc and some of the guys but it's really special to be a part of this wave where with through technology and knowledge that that we can extend careers i guess if you will yeah you know i think it was just a whole mentality you know uh the fighter five years you know younger than me the guys that i mean five years older than me the guys are in the 40s right now you know they they grew up in this sport with a different set of rules you yeah know, that once you reach once you reach your 30s you know you're done you know that's that's the, that's the best you ever gonna be it's in the 20s and you see a lot of guys you know defining that now a lot of the top guys are in the late 30s you know like some of the guys are in the 40s it's crazy yeah you know so it's it really broke that uh, uh, mental barrier of, you know, oh, dude, my body won't hold up. No, 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 hold up. It's all about training preparation, you know. I, one thing that I notice now at 35, I don't get out of shape. I'm always training. Mm. You know, if I get out of shape, it's a lot harder to get in shape. But if you stay in shape, you know, to get in shape is 
it's not that hard. So I don't take long breaks anymore. I think the most I take off, you know, I, I just I, I just fall last Saturday. So I took a few days off, but even when I'm training in preparation, I don't like to take a full day off because I feel that it slows me down a little bit because when I take a full day off, I'm usually eating bad foods and stuff like that. So <laughs> yeah. actually, I'm actually heavy, you know, coming in on Monday. So I, I try to do uh, active recovery workout now. I try not to take days off. You know, I don't go crazy every day, but I'm always moving my body. I'm always trying to detox, get that, that, that oil, you know, running in the motor to make sure that everything is running in, uh, you know, perfectly. But, yeah, do that. That's a big misconception. At 35 right now, I feel as strong as a athletic, you know, even with 10 surgeries that I haven't did before. So I'm truly excited to see, you know, what this all the two years has in, in, in store for me. That's incredible, incredible <laughs> stuff. So one thing before we let you go here, one of the sections we do in the magazine is called the, the five fights of my life. And if there's anybody to ask, you're the guy. You, you said the, the fight with GSP, the title fight, you know, just so many great wins over your career, even early from Caro and, you know, the fight with Spencer Fisher, so many wars, so many amazing fights. When I ask you that question, we don't have to go crazy in depth, but when I first ask you that question, what's the first fight that comes to mind as, as one of the fights of your life? Uh, I would say the first one, it will be me versus uh, Chris Lytle. You know, uh, that, that was a, a very good fight because I, I seen Chris Lytle kicking ass you know, for many, many years. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, 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 I got an opportunity to fight him in New Jersey and everything, you know, in the first round. I was kind of hesitating because he just came at me. You know, and then the second round, and again, I stopped fighting again, you know, and then he couldn't continue between the second and the third. So that's the first round that really, like, I, that's a guy that I've been watching, mm. you know, kicking ass for a very long time. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and I'm working right now, so it, it had a lot of, like, mysteries behind that fight, you know, mental mystery, mental barriers that I have to break, you know, so that was exciting. The second was, say, Conor Parisian. You know, Conor Parisian was another, another guy, you know, that was the guy that was destroying everybody. And when I fought him, was, uh, you know, I was very scared because we actually went to Colorado Springs. We spent uh, uh, two, three weeks there to get adjusted and everything. And he was such a gangster. He's like, I don't need to get adjusted. I'll be all right. Yeah, I'll get to play with him. I'm going to get you guys to get <laughs> He's on a row. So that was the second. I say the third, uh, you know, definitely versus uh, Matt Heath. You know, yeah, a legend thing. in the sport. Yeah, and you, you got the W, yeah. absolutely. What, what do you remember yeah, most uh, about, like you said, taking on a, a just an absolute legend in the sport at the time, probably the greatest welterweight of all time, still right behind GSP? You know, what, what was it like to face, again, someone you probably watched a lot coming up and to get in there and to get the W? I mean, that has to, had to be a special night. It was, it was, it was crazy, you know, it didn't hit me until, like, a few days after, you know, <laughs> yeah. because I, I kind of took a less, less minute, you know, I just had a fight with Cairo, and then I guess some, something fell through, and there was this opportunity to fight Matt Hughes in England, and my manager called, it was literally five weeks before the fight, I said, dude, you got, you got Matt Hughes next, you know, in a few weeks, what do you think, is it took, I'm in, I'm just confirming my coaches, but I'm in. Mm. And then, you know, like the week before, I broke my ankle, you know, uh, 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 sparring. That was my last sparring. I literally broke my ankle. I tore the ligament in my ankle. And uh, I wasn't going to fight. I wasn't going to fight, but I was able to get a poison shot at the time. And, you know, pretty much do nothing for a whole week. Just get on a bike and, and do a few workouts. That's one of the reasons I couldn't make the weight because I, I used to walk around a little bit heavier before all the surgeries. Yeah. And then, you know, you, know, you roll your ankle, so you're pretty much mobile for three days because you got to let that thing heal and then you got to fight. So one of the reasons I didn't make points, I had a lot of doubts, a lot of questions, you know, coming into that fight. But I came through, man. I know one thing. Once my back is against the wall, there's nowhere else to run. It becomes very easy for me. It's just trash and pour and see how it goes. So, you know, Matt Hughes is definitely special. And then, of course, you know, uh, uh, the GSP fight was super cool, too. But, I, I you know, I'll say the fourth fight was against that Bozanski, you know, because it was two years after, you know, two years, over two years lay off, you know, I didn't know where I was going to be in a weight class after two years without a fight, and then I come back, you know, fighting in Orlando, pretty much, you know, my hometown here now in America, pretty close to where I live, you know, in Florida, South Florida still, and I got fight at the night, you know, after two years of being off, you know, I get the very tough guy, the he just beat, um, he just beat a, a, a Magni, I think, at the time. Yeah, I believe that's right, yeah. Yeah, so I was like, all right, I'm fighting a 6'3 dude, 
Hollywood, you know, with <laughs> Mad Rich and big, big albums. <laughs> you know, that's just my career in UFC, man. I never, literally, I never chose or appointed ever. They just send me, you know, the contracts and I sign. Yeah. So that will be the fourth. It's definitely the fifth fight, you know, like after all, everything I've been through, this last fight, the fourth list to be able to fight, you know, and overcome and overcome and, you know, be able to put on a performance in front of my hometown. You know, I know it's controversial, but every, you know, split decision is going to be controversial. Sure, you know, sure. No it, you know, and I've been, on the other side, you know, like where I thought I won, but I didn't get the, the, the winning, you know, and I like this side a lot better. <laughs> yeah, like you said, it does go both ways. It happens. It happens both ways, you know. It sucks on the one end, yeah. and it's, it works on the other end. <laughs> yeah, and I've been, that, that's the crazy thing about it. I've been through it all. I've seen it all, you know, and I like this side a lot better. You know, I don't, I'm not the type of guy to complain, you know, about things that already happened. Yeah. I know but it's not gonna do any good or anything like that. We're gonna learn some new mistakes and we're gonna, you know, uh, fucking move forward. Yeah. But you know, I'm super happy with the result. I'm super happy with the performance. You know, I know I took it so in the second round. He wanted nothing to do with the fight and everything. He was able to get a good positioning, you know, in a good round, but he didn't do anything with it. You know, yeah. it was just a scramble, scramble, scramble. There was no damage. So it's literally how the, the way you look at the fight. You know, if you're gonna look at the fight, the, the guy that was trying to fight all the time, it's me all day. You know, so uh, it could it could have been a different result, you know, in, in another uh, uh, another country. Yeah, it could be, and it could. So you know, you never really know. Man, my job is to fight. I'm not a judge. I'm Absolutely. not a referee. I'm happy as shit. You know, and I think, <laughs> yeah, dude, and I, and I think 99 percent of everybody else is happy. You know, besides yeah. Matt. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Even Sean Shelby, dude, he was super stoked. You know, everybody else. So, so. That's great. Well, hey, man. Yeah, that's, one? I was going to say, that's all I got for you. Always appreciate the time. I know it's been a little while since we caught up. Let's do it on a more regular basis. I'll definitely keep in touch and let you know when this stuff goes to the print. And uh, I'll definitely get some copies out to you, man. Great to see you back in there. Great to see you healthy. We're really looking forward to these next two years for you, man. Let's let's catch up a bunch in those two years. <laughs> I'm down, brother. Let's go. Let's go. I think I'm fighting again in um, Curitiba, Brazil, May 12th. I don't know who against yet, but I'll keep it posted. Awesome. Sounds great, man. Congrats again. Thanks for the time. Let's do it again soon. Sounds good, brother. Thank All right. You. Thanks a lot. Have a good one. So that was the interview with Tiago Alves. Like I said, kind of just a, a great fighter. Just one of those guys in the motorway division. He's kind of been at the top of the game for the better part of a decade. Even though he's battled through injuries off and on, he's still been a name that's been there. So... Always great to talk to Tiago. Just, uh, again, I know I say this a lot, but it's true. There are so many great people in the sport to talk to. Guys are so generous with their time, so personable. It's just, it's just a, it's a, it's a joy to talk to these guys. And like he had said, you know, we talked a little bit beforehand. He's a little bit of a throwback, and we, we got into that conversation. You can speak to this point, John, if you feel this way or not. Like he said, I asked him, do you feel like we've lost a little bit of that stand and bang like exciting, you know, firefights. Are we are we too too safe? Are we too technical? Which may sound crazy, but on one hand, you know, fans want to see what they want to see. And he said, yeah, he feels like we lost some of that excitement of standing and banging on of, of biting down on the mouthpiece and getting after it. Do you feel like that's missing a bit in MMA today, or do you, are you good with the super technical side or the mix that we have? I think well. You know me, and I love I, I love a good a br- good brawl, good fight. So so yes, I miss the guys that that that's their calling card, and yeah. I don't I don't think you see as many of those guys anymore. Um, but at the same time, it's a catch twenty two. Now we're seeing guys that have been training since they were 11, 12 years old that the the technique is higher. So yeah. if you're a fan of of good technique, cool. We're also getting a lot of high level wrestlers now. And the high level wrestlers, the the fights aren't taking place on their feet as much anymore. So, um, the answer to your question is, I'm okay with the trade off, but I would like I would like to see somebody come along that just wants to <laughs> wants to stand and bang. I, I would not be I would not be opposed to that because, again, I I think those days are over. Yeah, yeah. I I, I think you're going to see it in spurts and fights. But I think the days of the of the guy that just, you know, that bites down and says, I'm going to do it, you know, I mean, 
who was the last guy that you would say really was that guy? I don't Matt Brown, that or Diego like Sanchez, Robbie Lawler to yeah. a, to a to a yeah. point. Maybe not so much anymore. But and, and, and we're point. not taking anything away from those guys technically. No, not at all. But I, I think now. If you see a guy like that, you're going to see it in combination with yeah. good technique. Which again, uh, Tiago absolutely does. I mean, he was one of the he was one of the guys in the early days that was kind of a um, you know the, where they always say if you put a guy on a poster and say that's a fighter, you know, just you know, you know, put together. Yeah. Always looked angry. <laughs> always looked mad. Even though he's one of the nicest people you'd ever right. talk to. Right, but yeah, always funny. looked mad. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, one of those guys that was really, really put together for a fighter. You yeah. know, you know, really good shape. You know, a little bit bigger and thicker than some yeah. of the other guys in the welterweight division. But just looked like he wanted to hurt you yeah. at every turn. And, and usually delivered. Yeah, and one of the most impressive fights, and we talked about this in our interview... I always remember of Tiago. Well, first of all, the leg kicks. He was just so vicious with those leg kicks and his stand-up game. And I don't think he gets enough credit for his ground game, but he was just such a vicious kicker and striker. That Matt Hughes fight, man, that was the fight where you're like, oh, my goodness. This guy is an absolute wrecker, you know. So, yeah, anyhow, we, we got we got the, the interview with Tiago there. Uh, and we definitely want to talk about UFC 234, do a little recap there. Um, Johnny Vavakis. We know the, the the extremely unfortunate situation that led to the, the cancellation of the, the main event of the evening between Robert Whitaker and Kelvin Gastelum. Just a super uh, unfortunate situation with, with Robert Whitaker. So the co-main event of the evening was bumped up to the main event of the evening, which was Israel Adesanya against the GOAT. One of the GOATs, Anderson Silva. Um, if there's ever been a quote-unquote, passing of the torch in a fight. <laughs> I would challenge you to find one more so than, than we saw here for various reasons. But uh, they didn't necessarily stand and bang, but they stood and put on one hell of an exciting three-round fight. What are your thoughts on the uh, the co-main that became the main event of the evening? You, you know what that reminded me of? You know when you, you play a, a video game? You know, like whether it be a UFC video game or a fighting video game, and you pick one character and you play against, like you both pick the same character. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. know? Yeah. That That's what it looked like. Yeah. It was literally Anderson Silva fighting Anderson Silva. Yeah. Or it was Stylebender fighting Stylebender. It was the yeah. same dude. Yeah. I, and I loved it. Yeah. And I think... Uh, we've, we've talked about it a couple times. You know, we talked about it ourselves. We talked about it with, uh, with Tim Boach when he was on, you know, how fighters should go out. Yeah. And that's how he should go out. Because I will tell you, you know, obviously, you know, the, you know, Adesanya won the fight. No doubt about that. But there were certain points in the fight you're like, you know what? Oh, Spider had his moments. Anderson for sure. is in this, and you know, and for you sure. were, it was a good competitive fight. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah. They were talking trash though, and showing, and and showing off the way you should. Yeah, you know absolutely. that was that was what what happened in that fight was what made Anderson Silva great, where he could he could show boat, but at the same time. It he's he's still he's he was technical he was he was spinning he was kicking he was he was at distance he was at range he was countering yeah. it, that was fun it's, and again you know it it there was no title contention on the line there was no belts on the line there was it wasn't going to do anything in the rankings but those are the kind of fights that these veterans that's how they should go out yeah. I was I was very entertained and. More than anything else, I was just happy for Anderson Silva, you know, even in defeat, because that's the way. Those, you know, those are the fights he needs to go out with, passing the torch to to the next Anderson Silva. Yeah. And I know that's high praise. Yeah. And I and I'm saying that stylistically. Yeah. I'm not saying that 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 he's going to be Anderson Silva, but stylistically, we've heard it a couple times. We've heard, you know, Philippe Nover. We've heard yeah. Uriah Hall. We've yeah. heard these guys that were the next Anderson Silva that. You know, didn't pan out. I think we saw it on Saturday night. Yeah, and uh, Shab, Brendan Schaub had a had a really brilliant way of putting it. He said, "It's like 
Adesanya downloaded the Anderson Silva package and it's kind of adding to it, which mm-hmm. I thought was pretty cool. And I think it's pretty fitting. We're seeing that evolution of the sport constantly. And I think this is a good example of that evolution that, that may be the highest level. <laughs> And I think it's, it, and if you want to say it that way, it's, it's Anderson Silva with a little bit more power. Yeah. You know, I, I think. Shab even said better, like a better right, version, which right. again is high praise. And again, but. he's a, and, and I know his build and the way he was, but Anderson Silva, you wouldn't consider him a, a power puncher. You wouldn't consider him a really strong, impressive guy. Now that fed into to the way he fought, being long and lanky, but Adesanya's long, he's lanky, he does the same things, but he's a little he's got a little bit more power, he's yeah. a little bit stronger, a little bit more athletic. So again, like you said, the he's Anderson Silva 2.0. Yeah. He's the he's the he's the upgrade. So it's high praise and and again, we're we're all we're all guilty of the moment, right? He's Absolutely. he's the next big thing. But I think this comparison is fair. We've heard these other guys compared to Anderson Silva and every and and none of them panned out none not a single guy who's been compared to Anderson Silva and was was heard from again I, I, I'm saying if I'm betting I, I I think we're gonna we're gonna hear a little bit more about Asanya in the future Here, here's the thing about being compared to Anderson Silva there's one thing about being compared to him there's another thing about fighting him and beating him <laughs> which none of those guys had done obviously this would this would be like you know this would be like uh, Kobe playing Jordan in the yeah, finals and, yeah. and beating him. It's the same thing. Yeah. You know, Kobe was probably the closest thing to Jordan that we saw. Yeah. So, and, but he added a little bit more, a little bit more athletic than Michael, yeah. a little bit, you know, you know, did some different, probably a better, sh- you know, shooter than uh, Michael. You, you, you just stopped talking. I'm, I'm telling not, you, not, I'm just saying. No, Michael's here. the GOAT. We're not, I'm not, that I'm not, compl- I'm not <laughs> arguing. I'm just saying he did some different things. No, I'm, I'm So teasing, yeah. that's what we're doing. So it's the same thing. You know, it would be like Kobe playing Michael in the finals. Yeah. You know, if Michael, if Michael takes the, would have taken the Wizards to the finals, <laughs> it would have been, the, you know, that would have been what we're talking about here. Yeah. And for the record, I absolutely love Kobe Bryant too. He's probably... Second or third on my all-time list of favorites behind MJ. But uh, the, the interesting question from this point, the obvious question, the, the natural question is, what is next for the style bender? A, how long is Whitaker out? What's Gastelum's future? Do, they, does, do Gastelum and Adesanya fight now for an interim or for the shot at Whitaker? Uh, Weidman, like you said prior to us getting, coming on air, Weidman's randomly saying, you know, so-and-so's overrated. What's the hype about? He's... You know, I don't know. It looked pretty uh, legit so far. Or Jacques yeah. Array's out there. I mean, there's all there are a lot of interesting options. Romero and Costa are matched up now, which it seems like in the top five, Adesanya might have to prove he has a ground game or has some takedown defense because there are some ground heavy guys in the top five of the division. Now, here's sure. my question: did, 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 Am I out of line when I say that the Romero Costa fight is like uh, is like old school Pride, where where there's um, Maybe some shenanigans going on. <laughs> I don't know. There's maybe a few cocktails, yeah. and I'm not talking about bourbon. <laughs> it's going to be a fun one, though. It's going to be uh, it is, gonna be fun. You know, it, For it, however long or short it lasts, it, oh it should be an goodness. interesting one. <laughs> it's like the old, you know, I, what I would like to see in that fight would be like the old Saturday Night Live skit back in the, the old days where they had the all-steroid Olympics. <laughs> yeah. Just let those two go. Oh my! And they start. It was the guy trying to deadlift, and his arms his arms flew ripped off. off and I, you know what? Everywhere. Let him go. Yeah. Let yeah. those two go. Yeah. Let them eat whatever they want. <laughs> just horse meat, John. Right? It's just horse meat. It's horse something. <laughs> <laughs> so again, yeah, Adesanya. It's going to be interesting to see what happens next, and. Like I said, if it's a top, you you wouldn't think he'd fight down. So if you're looking up, that's who's ahead of him. So it could be interesting. Fighting down, I just happened to look at the top 15 before we came in, and nothing overly fun or exciting. But as a weird fun fight, not realistic. But it would be fun to see him and Uriah, wouldn't it? If Uriah is at his best, that would be a fun, again. I'm not saying it's going to happen. It doesn't make sense right now. But in fantasy world, that would be a fun fight to watch. Yeah, and I think again, I think Weidman. Is not. I'm. Mean, I'm sure he believes he can beat Adesanya. Yeah. There's no doubt in my mind. But I think that was absolutely a political move. Oh, you know, yeah. maybe I. Maybe I uh, get this guy's attention. Mm-hmm. I'm one and yeah. four in my last fight. <laughs> yeah. You know, my last five fights. I. You know, and I think I match up okay with this guy. I beat him. I. It moves me back into 
into title talk. It, Weidman's no dummy. Or just the fact that we're even talking about it. Not just us, but a lot of people now that he threw that tweet out there, like, mission accomplished because, you know, people are talking about it now, the potential. So, yeah. John, I know you have a quiz for me later, but I'm going to challenge you right now. Can you name one other fight on, that, that happened, <laughs> not the canceled one, on UFC 234? You get uh, you get five dollars in a rattling the cage box if you if you come up with one. Um, did Mark Coleman fight at any <laughs> point or no? Him and Don Fry that was scratched last minute uh, too. I will honestly say I'll rest my case. I will and honestly that was say my- Tony, I know nothing. Yeah. I knew about I knew about the main event. That, yeah. I knew about the co-main event. I did not pay attention. And there was pro- and and this is no disrespect. There was probably some good fights underneath, but I didn't. I um no, that's proof. I I wouldn't have either. If you would ask, I'm looking, and if you would have asked me right now, I wouldn't yeah, have known right. any. But I think that kind of speaks to the point of of what we've talked about a lot, uh, you know, over the the months and years about the the strength of some of the the UFC cards or lack thereof. Uh, yeah, not not the best card top to bottom. So. Yeah, but one coming up this Sunday, live and free on, oh no, ESPN, not Spike TV. We can't even, we can't even use that anymore, John. I lost my, my favorite line. We do have a, a good card coming up here on, uh, on ESPN. Kane is back. Mm-hmm. Kane Velasquez stepping back after, what, about two and a half years out to take on one of the craziest, scariest monsters in the game, Francis Ngannou, in the main event. It's, all, it's a fight night Phoenix, I believe. So, Sunday night on ESPN. Kane was the first big-time fight on Fox. We saw what happened there against JDS. Didn't go very well for him. But now to be the big fight, first fight on ESPN, I mean, that's it's pretty a pretty cool, uh, you know, dovetail, 360, come around, whatever you want to call it. I think it's it's kind of cool. So, Looking ahead to, to Sunday night on ESPN, the main event anyway, Kane and Ganu. What Kane do we see, and how do you how do you think it plays out? That's the that's the answer to the question right there. Who what what Kane do we see? If we see the Kane Velasquez, mm. I don't think it. I, I think he. I think he takes Ngannou down and punches a hole in his face for as long as he wants to. Right. Pretty much. Uh, <laughs> And, yeah. and and I don't think he I, and I don't think he he's any slouch on the feet either. I think oh, it's yeah. I think he puts it on him. If he lets he lets Ngano hang around because there, maybe there's some ring rust, maybe there's some hesitation, maybe the timing's off, maybe he's still mentally not back. You never know because he because can 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 punch your head off your shoulders. So I think if Kane is right, it's a it's a. Uh, I will never say an easy night, but it's a dominant night. Yeah. But if 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 Ngano hangs around, he can he can uh, explode your face with with one or two punches. So that's, you never know. That's for sure. And I know I just talked down at the the UFC card of this past weekend. Again, like we said, no disrespect to anybody on the card, but for the average fan or even even some of the hardcores, you know, you're not going to get overly excited about a lot of that. Just being honest. Um, what what we what what praise we you know what we take away we have to give back because this card Sunday night on ESPN is a banger basically from top to bottom so kudos to the UFC for putting on you know kind of putting your best foot forward on on ESPN we got Ngannou Velasquez main event James Vic Paul Felder which should be a barn burner that's the co-main Courtney Casey Cynthia Cavillo that's a that's an awesome fight Alex Caceres against Kron Gracie that should be a solid fight. Um, Miles Jury, Andre Feely, those guys both get after it. That's a hell of a fight. That's that's the main card. Prelims, Aljo against Jimmy Rivera. Mm-hmm. That's like a fight for the East Coast. That's a that's a great fight. Ashley Evan Smith, Andrea Lee, that should be a good one. Scott Holzman, Nick Lentz, those two get. A- I mean, that's Henan Burrell's on the early prelims. Former champ, former guy, considered one of the top pound for pound fighters in the sport. On the prelims against Luke Sanders, which should be a fun fight. Jessica Penne is on the on the early prelims. I mean, that that's a damn good card. So kudos, applause, congratulations, whatever you want to say to the UFC for putting that together. That's a that's a that's a card you'd see back in the 
UFC 50s or 60s or 70s where the top to bottom, you you know, you pretty much knew everyone. You were excited for it, and that's going to be a hell of a card. And, and, the, and the thing that's cool is there's some fights that have some meaning to them. Like yeah. you said, the Aljo-Jimmy Rivera fight, with, you know, us being, you know, East Coast guys and knowing a little bit about what goes on, those two have wanted to fight each other for years. Those two have wanted to fight each other since back in the... You know the 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 lower level days. You know yeah. the the CFFC days and the Ring of Combat days and the you know all over the East Coast. That the, those two were kind of as they were coming up. It was like, when are they going to fight? When yeah. are they going to fight? When are they going to fight? And it never happened. It's cool that it's happening now yeah. on on a grand stage. I, I'm much I'm happier that they're fighting now than you know they would have fought. It, it, at yeah, like Ring at, of Combat at or something at Joe's Chicken Shack <laughs> in in. <laughs> You know, Pasaka or something. Yeah, yeah, but it that's that's cool, and that, and that's a good fight. I yeah. like that fight. Man, the whole thing is yeah. so good. Oh, that's pay per view worthy, right there. Jeez, you know? Felder that's, and Vic. Yeah, there there's two guys that 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 might bite down and stand in back. Yeah, yeah. James Vic, that's what he said. He's like, I'm just, he's going for it. So yeah. he's definitely, and, and you have, have that Felder who's, too. And, and it's interesting. You have that contrast in styles where Vic might be a guy that you can say would be one of those throwbacks mm-hmm. that'll stand in bag, but Felder is as technical a kickboxer as you'll find. Yeah. So, I, yeah. Who wins? You know, I, I like everything. We win, John. Like we say, the we fans win. win on this one. I, I enjoy that fact. Kane Velasquez. Kane. Now, how about this though, too? That here's the issue I keep what hearing. What if he though. comes out and gets knocked out in like 35 seconds uh, again? But like, again, here's the problem with MMA. After the is, long layoff, I'm yeah. telling you, here's the problem though with MMA is we're always looking for the next thing. Mm-hmm. There, in interviews leading up to a fight against Francis Ngannou, who is a dangerous, dangerous opponent, what kind of questions is he already is he already fielding? Are you gonna fight Brock Lesnar? Are you gonna fight John yeah. Jones? You know, again, let the guy come back. Yeah. Let's see what we got. Now, do I want to see Kane and John Jones at of heavyweight? Course. Heck yeah, I do. <laughs> yeah. Do I, you know, do I want to see that? Yes, I do. That was always like, you know, John Jones is widely considered the GOAT or one of the greatest, clearly, of all time. And all other extracurriculars aside, his skill set is in cage, you know, Resume is basically unchallengeable, if that makes sense. But uh, it was always lingering, like, well, the one guy that you know he couldn't get past, the one guy he couldn't get through is this Cain Velasquez. Well, <laughs> there's an outside chance we see it, and what if we do? What if Jones puts it on Cain Velasquez? I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put, <laughs> which wouldn't shock right. me in the least. But. Right? Oh my gosh, Kane, <laughs> see, I'm gonna put Cain as kind of right now. I will put him because if we never see Kane, the former Kane again, yeah. I'm going to put him as that Bo Jackson in kind yeah, of in that Bo yeah. Jackson range, That's where fair. for that little moment of time, he was the greatest fight. He was the best thing we'd ever seen because yeah. you had never seen a heavyweight with that with that combination of speed, stamina, pushing the pace. He was technical. He could wrestle. He could strike. Like and and to have a heavyweight do it. Yeah. That's the you know that was what, why Fedor always had that little edge as the greatest of all time because he was a heavyweight doing mm-hmm. it. But Kane was that guy that we've never seen before, yeah. and I think he, he and I put him in that kind of Bo Jackson thing because you never saw a guy that looked like Bo Jackson that could run and move like Bo Jackson. So I, it's kind of the same thing. I, I I look old school. Kane was the Bo Jackson of MMA. And I'm hoping that his story isn't the same as Bo Jackson's yeah. where we just go, man, if he wouldn't have gotten hurt, yeah. can you imagine what he would have done? Because again, I think if anybody matches up against John Jones, it's, you know, a hundred percent on the game. It's the Cain Velasquez. Yeah. If, yeah. if that's the only guy that matches up with John Jones, that I, I have seen in the past and I see in the future. Yeah. So that's the thing. I hope, again, I, and I'm now guilty of it. I'm looking forward. Yeah. I hope he's, I hope he, he can't help but do it. He I do. I it. hope he mows through Ngano. I hope he looks like the man yeah. because, again, the rumblings will start because it, 
205 is not good. Yeah. 205 is not solid. John Jones has got nobody. He's got to go up. Yeah. That's what we all want to see. It's what the people want. Give the people what they want, Tony. I try. That's how I live my life. I try. That's how I live my life. <laughs> Give the people what they want. I try, John. So, uh, I hear you have a, a quiz of some sort, some well, shape, form, or fashion. Here. I do, Tony, and and, oh, and I think so. You know, for we've been doing this for going on five years now, forty-seven and a half years. It is true. We've been doing this for a long time, something like that. You know, from from doing it, we we used to do this in a mall. We did. We actually used to, you know, broadcast it from a, it a mall. There's a very nice little studio in that mall. It was excellent, yeah. you know, back in the day. So I've always been clear. I've always been kind of classified as the goofball. I've always mm. been kind of classified as the comic relief for the show. Mm. Um, you know, what people don't know is is in my real life, you know, I've got a master's degree. I'm a therapist by trade. I, I have a smart job. I actually do. Wow. So, so Tony, I prepared... Um, a psychological test for you. Oh my An MMA God. psychological test, Tony. Oh, shit. Okay. All right? All right. Okay, so so what we're going I to do I see a butterfly. Is, oh, no. I'm not. Well, it's kind of like that. Okay. So, okay. so what we're going to do is I'm going to ask you a couple questions just to get your brain warmed up. Mm. So That might take a while. Exactly. So what I want you to do is I want you to take a couple deep breaths. This is I now want a three-hour well, I want show. you to prepare, Tony. <laughs> so, so... <sighs> Okay. I want you to answer with the first thing that comes to your mind when I ask you this All right. question. All right. Okay. I'm ready. ready? Okay. And now these ones are just about you. Now some oh, other ones are in gonna you know might have an answer, but we'll go from there. Okay. All right, Tony. Yes. All right. Your favorite fighter of all time. Randy Couture. Okay. Sakuraba. It's hard. One of the oh, two. Oh, see. One of the two. Oh no. Okay. Your favorite fight of all time. Sakuraba Hoist Gracie. Ah, interesting. Interesting. Okay. What's the first MMA memory you have? Taya Tuli. <laughs> Taya Tuli almost dying? Yeah. <laughs> losing, uh, losing, losing teeth. <laughs> yes. Yes. And it, you, you, you know the correct answer is our Jimerson wearing one glove. <laughs> it's, it's, it would have been second, bro. <laughs> right. Right. Okay. So now we'll, we'll, we'll get a little bit more into it, Tony. See, okay. You, so... So, which MMA fighter would make the best uh, president? <laughs> I don't think very high of any political office, and there are a few guys. No disrespect. Chael Sonnen. Chael Sonnen, okay. Um, well, there's two correct answers, Tony. The correct answer <laughs> okay. um, is Brian Stan. <laughs> okay. But the real correct answer is Don Fry. Okay. So Tim Kennedy. Yes, Tim. Now, well, we'll get to we'll get to where Tim Kennedy okay. may come All in. Right. Um, uh, if you if there was four MMA fighters mm -hmm. and the zombie apocalypse happened yeah. and you had to, we've had this conversation. Yeah. Who are the four guys you're you're taking with you to survive? Well, there's Tim Kennedy, um, Yoel Romero, Tim Kennedy, Demetrius. I'll go small. We'll go John Jones. Okay. You never know what you might need. The size right. of zombies, you know, that kind of thing. Okay, where you, coming those, from. those are pretty good. Tim Kennedy is obviously one yeah. um, that you're going to need. I, I'm going to go, I'm going to say you're going to need Matt Brown. Okay. Because the zombies can't die and neither can Matt Brown. True. Okay. Okay. Um, Demetrius is, 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 is very resourceful. I like that. Yeah. You're going to need Roy Nelson. Because who are you going to eat <laughs> when you run out of food? <laughs> okay. I don't all right. know. Um, all right, you need four. You need four fighters okay. to start a rock band. A rock you, band. A rock band. Go ahead. I can go with Matt Brown on that one. Actually, okay. rock. That's the key. Rock. Or just band in yeah, general. Okay. But but we'll go. We'll go rock. We'll yeah. go heavy metal rock ish. Got Matt Brown. We what's got... what's he playing or doing? I like drums or guitar. Okay. I smashing drums, I mm -hmm. would say. Matt Brown on drums. That's not bad. Not bad. Rock. Hmm. Rock band. I know you're a rap guy. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, you're really throwing me off with the genre here. Rap, we got Tyron Woodley, right? No, uh, rock. Man. 
Going all time, anyone? Anyone. Harold Howard. Harold Howard, I like he that. He might be the front man. Harold he, Howard might be the front man. He's got the he's got the locks for it. He's got the party in the front or the business in the front, party in the back. That is good. I like that. So we gotta go old school because you need some you need some part <laughs> business in the front, party in the back. We'll okay. go Harold Howard, maybe on vocals. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Matt Brown on drums. Oh my. Who is shredding the axe? Oh, that's that's a big one. That's a big ask. Who is shredding the axe? Who? Who? Man, I don't know, John. I don't know. Do you need some help? Yeah, give me a couple. Well, Alan Belcher has a Johnny Cash tattoo. <laughs> so that would not. That would be okay. Yeah. Josh Thompson. So he's the punk. Yeah, that might be okay. Yeah. Um, you know, so I, I think there's there are some answers. Yeah, Harold um, Howard. Now, are we a, if we're a boy Brown. band, you're picking Sage Northcutt, but yeah, yeah, Sage. Yeah, uh, that's that's the only choice for boy band. That is the only. He's choice. like all four. He's all boy four band combined. members in one, rolled into one. Right. All right. Well, I, I, you did you did all right. Then. I'll get back to you. Okay. On that one. Which um which MMA fighter would you least like to see uh, make a sex tape? Everyone in the male. <laughs> So I didn't There's only one answer. You know this, right? Who? Bigfoot Silva. Yeah, that would not be good. <laughs> yes. At least I can't imagine. I don't want to imagine, exactly. but I can't imagine so, that would all right, be we'll good. We'll keep moving. Um, and, and, and now Khabib come, goes out of this because he's already done it. Yeah. So we've talked about this. Which, which MMA fighter would be uh, most likely to, who would you like to see fight a bear? Hmm. Lance Palmer. He needs a rematch. He okay. did some bear wrestling as a kid. All right, very good. Lance Palmer. Which uh, which MMA fighter would would you like to see fight a robot? Cyborg, of course. There you go. That is the that is actually the correct answer. Yeah. Either Chris or Evangelista. I got you. Know, there you go. Male, which uh, which female. MMA fighter do you think is most likely to believe in aliens? Ooh. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know. You got you got a couple. There's two answers, <laughs> and they're both the, the Diaz brothers. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that, yeah it's, which which MMA fighter would would be most likely to know how to knit? Boy, I don't know. What do you think? I don't. Know. I asking. don't know. I, don't I think Fedor because he made his own sweater. See, there's always there's an answer. He's he's got the answer already. He wants exactly. To... See, I've thought these through. I actually, the, I actually held that sweater. Right, I know you did. I held the glorious right. What is the sweater most, of victory? What is the most underrated MMA technique? Um, any punch combination that has, it's above one two. <laughs> we need like a four piece, a five piece. We need some. Yeah. The answer is the can opener. Mm. From Mark Coleman. Well, Mark Coleman's <laughs> retired. Right. Yeah. No, no it, it's most that's it's a, it's a signature. Okay. Oh, we we this is a conversation we've had before. Uh, what what's the celebrity MMA fight? Two celebrities you want to see fight? Um, can it be f- because I want to see both of them hurt? It doesn't matter. Um, that Logan Paul kid that everybody's talking about, and throw Kanye in there. Okay. We, I'm going to use the one we've used in the past. I would like to see um, Wesley Snipes fight Ed O'Neill mm. because I'd like to see Ed O'Neill take him down and oh, choke yeah. him out. He w- because, probably would. Because Wesley Snipes has already, you know, he ran his, he shot his mouth off of numerous times about various MMA fighters and how yeah. he might be the toughest guy in Hollywood. And I'd like to see Al Bundy choke him out how about with his own Steven arm. Seagal, Ed, Al Bundy. <sighs> Ed O'Neill, Steven Seagal. That yes. would be fun. Because, you know, basically similar size, similar age. News, that would be fun. news flash, Ed O'Neill's a badass, people. Oh, yeah. Black belt. Right. Racy black belt, baby. Right. Um, mm-hmm. Then give me like two more. Okay, so, so which MMA fighter in your lifetime was the most scary? Scary? Scary. Just looking. Just see, looking at that guy going, that guy scares me. Hmm. Kimo had to rank up there pretty high because back in the day, before you knew what was what, right. he comes out looking like that, like bearing a cross on his back. That is true. He did carry a cross. I don't know, scary, but like, ooh, something, something to this guy kind of right. thing. 
Yeah, because again, Tank Abbott, you knew. Yeah, and like the whole tattoo that act, doesn't do yeah. anything for me. Tattoos like, that's don't not... do anything. You, you so want... something sheer size or sheer just, you know, like there's so many guys in the early days. You, you could run off a list of right. guys from the early days. I'm going to give you one kind of off the radar because I've said this. Yeah. I'm going to say Joanna Yunjacek is one of the scariest because she's 125 pounds <laughs> And could rip your face off. Yeah, yeah. So I think that's scary, knowing yeah. that, you know, you know, you can't do anything to this this tiny woman. Her weigh-ins, like when she like And she's so intense and angry. She she wants to look in her opponent's eyes. Even if they look away or look down, you'll see her crouch down and look up or look over at them. She She doesn't want to look in their eyes. She wants to look into their soul. But yeah, Johnny. yeah. Well basically <laughs> through their eyes. Right. Yeah. Um, into their soul. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, if you had one, f- if oh, so let's go with this one. Who's the least scary fighter you've ever seen? Hmm. And why is it Sage Northcutt? <laughs> <laughs> no, like we've talked, Evil Sage. I kind of Evil, Evil Sage. Yeah, I like Evil Sage. But like Sage. Sage, like we need a heel turn, like pro yeah, wrestling. Yeah, yeah. We there are so many guys that are unassuming though that are yeah. badasses. Like even DJ, like one of the baddest asses on the planet. Like. Doesn't look, you know, like DJ. Part, that's or, one. Yeah. A lot of the guys, you know, smaller guys, like Rory even, McDonald. Yeah, Rory was, McDonald looks like an accountant. You know, right, like, and right. he would probably murder you if, if right. he felt like doing it. Exactly, with I, his bare yeah. hands, rip Very you good. into a million pieces. Um, mm-hmm. All right, if you, uh, what's the best fight city? Oh boy, you're gonna have a fight in one city. Or is it going to yeah, be? hold an event? You have to hold. What's the best fight in city for well, a fight Vegas, event? Well, Vegas, of course, is okay. the fight capital. Is it really the, but I mean, Huntington it's the Beach fight capital. Huntington Beach used to be like the gym hot spot. Yeah, but. It's kind of coming back But the people, are, but there's so much to distract you. Yeah. You and I have been to fights in Vegas. It, pe- yeah. The people aren't really that into it. Maybe I just like Vegas that Vegas much. Vegas is cool. That's probably what it is. <laughs> Sunbury, Pennsylvania, right. John. We want to see a, a yeah. big old event in Sunbury, I think most, PA. You know, to me, most of the Cana- most of the Canadian cards have been good. Yeah, Montreal. Any, anywhere crazy. outside the United States has been really good. I, even though it might be against my better judgment, I would like to see. I would like to travel to Brazil to see a fight, a, a major fight. I'll miss you, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> I will miss you. But um, okay, yeah, we, I'd like to I'd, personally like Saitama Super Arena, you know, yeah. somewhere overseas in Japan or okay. something like that would be cool. All right. Even though it's not like a raucous crowd, it's just yeah, the opposite. It's yeah, quiet, it's just cool. just to be in that. Right. I think the, I, the you know the UFC Hawaii Crazy was part. fun. So. Yeah. Um, which fighter has the best nickname of all time? Hmm. So many. Uh, Iceman. That's great. Chuck Liddell. Mm-hmm. That's a great one. That's an all timer. Um. I don't know what he got. That's the first top of mind. That was really Ice Man. That's a good one. I like because it it fit. Yes, yeah, I mean, he perfect. wore the gear. It yeah. was, that fit. I like that one. You know, there, there's a lot of different. The Last Emperor for Fedor is yeah. always good. Yeah. My, now my favorite of all time was okay until it was kind of um, ripped off later. But I always loved Joey Beltran, the <laughs> Executioner. That was always yeah. my favorite. Yeah. Um, that was that was always one of my favorite ones. But yeah, that was good. But uh, here now, and we've had this conversation as well. Worst nicknames are anything that that fits with your name, right? Yeah. So you know if your if if your last name has to do with anything fire and, and you have fire, you know Elliot Fire Marshall, yeah, Fire Gilbert, Burns, Fire Burns, or whatever. You can't yeah. have those. No, you no. can't give yourself a nickname either. I don't care how no. cool it might be. That's a faux pas. You cannot give yes. yourself a nickname. You hear that, Mark the Shark bites? Yeah. You cannot give yourself a nickname. Whoever that is, yeah. You hear that, son? Okay, okay. I, I'm going to tell this story real quick. Okay. We had a guy come into the gym and actually introduce himself. And I'm going to throw you out, Mark the Shark Bites. <laughs> Mark, it, Mark Bites, a uh, young man who used to, used to do the MMA. Um, not well, man, I add. He uh, actually introduced himself <laughs> to uh, Tim's, Tim's uh, head trainer at the time, Wade Fatul. Yeah. He says, hi, I'm Mark the Shark Bites. I have very heavy hands. <laughs> Uh, and Mark the Shark Bites fought at about 117 pounds. <laughs> so um, you cannot introduce yourself with the nickname. Yeah. And uh, if you and you never never introduce yourself with having heavy hands. You can't introduce yourself with your own given nickname or with your your own idea of what your attributes are. <laughs> I yes. think that's equally faux yes. pas. So, so hey, Mark, by the way, so, I have heavy hands. So, I have, I have so a Mark great the Shark Bites, kick. if you're listening. 
You made two. You, there was two party fouls. Two, two MMA party fouls. fouls. <laughs> so, all right. So, last one. I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you here. Yeah. If you had one fighter. Yeah. And and him and him or her winning the fight. Uh, your life depended on it. Oh who my. who are you picking to fight for your life, Tony? And you, the, I'm not telling the opponent. I'm not telling yeah. you where it is, what it is. You got you got one person, and if they lose, you're dead, Tony. I gotta go, John Jones. I mean, it has never been proven otherwise at the highest level. Is that painful for you? No, no, no. Not, if, not if it's for me to survive. I'll take it. <laughs> That's probably the correct answer. Because here's the thing: how many Fedor people? Fedor circa 2006. How many? Yeah, and it can be any yeah, fighter of any yeah. time of any period, right? So Pride Fedor or John Jones from any time frame, right? <laughs> but how many career. people are gonna go? But how many people are gonna not pick John Jones? Yeah, you know, I, I, it's amazing. So, so I, I I'm gonna let you know, Tony. Yeah, um, you're not insane. Well, that's good. You're not insane. You know? Fooled another person. <laughs> Yeah, fun conversation. Tony. Yeah, fun conversation. Yeah. Well, I think that's all we got, John. We're about ready to wrap this thing up. What are we doing next week? Are we trying to get Tim Boach back in here, or what? I, I mean, he is, he does have a uh, a throwdown coming. It's official, like a referee with a whistle. He's got a fight lined up. He just got back from Vegas and see how his brain health is doing. Maybe we'll <laughs> see how his old old noggin's doing. Maybe I, get I heard his wife hit week. it big on the slots out there. They were up ten bucks or something. I know, ten bucks. bucks she won. Bam. You know what? Hey, when you when you get old and some and that's that's all you got. That's all you got. That's all you got. So yeah, that's gonna wrap up another show. Always thankful to uh, guys like Dennis Bermudez and Tiago Alves for coming through. Thanks to John Vavakis, Nick Shu in studio here with us for hooking it up. We'll see you next time. <laughs>